Welcome to Tea Time Oddities, the podcast where we explore the strange and the unusual throughout history. I am your host, Danielle, and today we will be discussing the life and disappearance of Connie Converse. So, pop the kettle on and grab a warm cup of tea. Hello, and welcome back. Thank you so much for coming back for the second episode of Tea Time Oddities. I would like to thank all 21 people who watched the last video. I want to give a special shout out to all of my friends who listened and my family. Anyway, today we will be discussing the disappearance of Connie Converse. This story was brought to my attention by my friend Tyla, so I'd like to say thank you, Tyla. Before we get into it, I wanted to talk about the tea I'm drinking. Today I'm drinking a blueberry acai tea. Honestly, not something I'd normally drink, but I kind of like it weirdly enough it does have caffeine though which doesn't normally sit well with me so if I'm talking a little too fast that's probably why (laughs) but I do also want to share the mug I'm drinking out of says the best therapist has fur and four legs and I live by those words all right let's get into it so while researching Connie Converse I had a chance to listen to some of her music And I just want to say, first and foremost, I love the way she writes her songs. I love the almost whimsical nature to all of them. And I highly recommend that you listen to her music. I would play some some of it on the show, but I'm not sure about the copyright stuff with that. So I'm not going to even bother because I don't want (laughs) to I don't want to have issues with that. Connie Converse was born Elizabeth Eaton Converse on the 3rd of August in 1924 in, bear with me on this pronunciation, Laconia, New Hampshire. She would later change her name to Connie, so I'm going to refer to her as Connie because that was her preferred name. Her early childhood consisted of time with her family. She had her parents and her two brothers, one older and one younger, so she was the middle child. Connie's dad was actually a minister, so she had a pretty strict religious upbringing. Growing up, Connie was always a star student. She won a ton of academic awards in high school. She even won a scholarship to Mount Holyoke College in Massachusetts. After two years in college, she decided it wasn't for her, and she packed up everything and moved to New York City. In the 1950s, she moved around New York City a lot, and she started writing and singing her own songs. She oftentimes played her music for her friends, She also began to pull away from her religious upbringing at this time, and she began drinking and smoking. Her music was recorded by her friend Jean Deitch, who was actually the cartoonist for Tom and Jerry. In 1954, Connie appeared on the morning show on CBS. This was arranged by her friend, yet again, Jean Deitch, and this was actually the only public performance that Connie ever did. These recordings, along with some that she made herself, are the only surviving performances of Connie singing her songs. In 1961, Connie moved away from New York, seeing that she wasn't having any success trying to make a name for herself. Ironically, that same year, Bob Dylan actually moved into Greenwich Village, where Connie once was living, and gained popularity pretty quickly. Connie was very discouraged that she was unable to break into the music business, and she moved to Ann Arbor, Michigan, where her brother Philip worked as a political science professor at the University of Michigan. She actually got a secretary job at that university, and later then she got a job as the editor and writer for the Journal of Conflict Resolution in 1963. After her move, Connie was very discouraged and stopped writing music altogether. Connie was a very private person, so some of the details are a little fuzzy in the things I'm going to talk about next, but just bear with me. In 1973, the journal she was working for suddenly moved to Yale without her knowledge. It just felt like no matter what Connie did, nothing seemed to go her way. Her colleagues all contributed to send her on a trip to England to improve her mood because they noticed that she was just very down and was feeling very blue about her whole situation. But sadly, this did not help 
Her mother urged her to go on a trip to Alaska with her, but this also did not help. It was actually said that this made her feel worse. She also received news from her doctor that she needed a hysterectomy, which just kind of sent her over the edge. Now that we've discussed her life, we're going to talk about her disappearance. In August of 1974, only a few days after her birthday, Connie wrote letters to all of her family and friends, stating that she was going to make a new life for herself elsewhere. The letters were delivered right before a family trip that they had planned to go on, but Connie was already gone. Connie had packed up her Volkswagen Beetle and was never seen or heard from again. Ten years after her disappearance, her family had hired a private investigator to find her. However, the investigator stated that if he did find her, he would not disclose her location if she didn't want them to know. So the family never pressed it and never found out what happened to her. Her brother Philip thinks that she probably had taken her own life, possibly driving her car into a body of water. But it's completely speculation, as no one knows what really happened. As of this recording, Connie has been missing for 48 years, 3 months, and 28 days. If Connie is still alive, she would be about 98 years old. So, to end on a little bit of a lighter note, because kind of a very heavy topic, but we're going to discuss how her music has recently become popular. In 2004, Deitch appeared on a radio show to play some of Converse's music. These songs were an instant hit for many, and it kind of started a revival of her music. And in 2009, the album How Sad, How Lonely, How Lovely was released. Then, in 2015, the full album of How Sad, How Lonely, How Lovely was released with 18 songs. Even after Converse had seemingly disappeared, her legacy lives on in the music that she created. Her music is considered some of the first instances of a singer-songwriter, which is nowadays very common, but back then most people didn't write and sing their music. So that pretty much wraps up everything that I looked into about Connie Converse, her life, her disappearance, but most importantly, her music. I really want to urge everyone to go listen to some of her songs. They're very just open and intimate and just something that seems so commonplace nowadays, but back then that was kind of like unheard of. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. I really hope you enjoyed this episode of Tea Time Oddities. Make sure to keep the kettle on and check in next month for another episode. Goodbye.